On the evening of July 1st of 1995, Erin Marie Gilbert went out on a date and was never seen again. Her date had car troubles and went on foot to get help, but when he got back to the car, Erin just vanished. So what happened? Where did she go? And what made her leave the car if she did? Stick around as we discuss this story, the disappearance of Erin Marie Gilbert. Erin Marie Gilbert was born on May 4th of 1971 in Everett, Washington. Erin was blessed with two sisters, Stephanie and Catherine. Erin always had an enthusiasm for life. Living in San Francisco, she knew she wanted more and a change of scenery. So in the summer of 1994, Erin joined her sister Stephanie and her family in Anchorage, Alaska. Erin's sister's family lived at Elmendorf Air Force Base, which is now the Joint Base Elmendorf Richardson. Stephanie's husband was in the military and traveled extensively for work, which would oftentimes leave Stephanie to be alone with her two children. So Stephanie was excited and welcomed Erin to come live with them. Erin's life was progressing and carefree as she was able to work as a nanny for a family known to Stephanie. With Anchorage's amazing trails, wildlife, and glaciers, it's billed as the state's cultural sin. Anchorage's atmosphere encouraged big dreams and goals into Erin as she was an aspiring writer and had planned on enrolling in cosmetology school. With Erin's confidence and outgoing nature, she took the time to enjoy nightlife to a place called Chilkoop Charles, which is a popular bar among the locals in Anchorage, which is known as Coots. In late June of 1995, while enjoying her time at the bar and playing pool, she met a guy named David Combs. The two quickly hit it off and planned their first date for July 1st. According to Stephanie, Aaron wasn't too enthused about the date, but decided to give David a chance anyway and stayed true to her plans that day. On the day of the date, Aaron was getting ready for her date. While she was getting ready, her nephew would ask her, if she wanted to bring a cell phone with her, but Aaron answered, no, that's okay. But in hindsight, the cell phone may have saved her life, as Stephanie explains to Dateline. David picks Aaron up at 4 p.m., and they head to the Girdwood Forest Fair, which was 40 minutes away from home. Aaron would be reportedly seen at a beer garden with David before 6 p.m., and that would be the last time Aaron is last seen. It would be reported in David's statement to the authorities that evening that David and Aaron walked to his car but noticed his lights were left on in the car, which would result in his car not being able to be started. David told Aaron that he was going to walk to his friend's house nearby and for jumping cables. It would take David two hours. However, David was unable to find his friend's home, so he returned to the car. Aaron was gone. So David decided to try to start his car up again. It miraculously started. He then went back to the fair to search for Aaron. According to David, he searched for Aaron at the fair till about 1 a.m. So David went home. It has been mentioned on a few sites that David lived close proximities to Aaron. But around 7 a.m., David reaches out to Aaron's family to see if Aaron made it home okay, to which Stephanie was unsure as it would have been difficult to hear Aaron come into her room due to the location of her room in the house. Stephanie remembers David sounding very casual about the whole thing on the phone. Stephanie and her family would immediately head over to the fairgrounds to search for Aaron. While at the fairgrounds, there was an announcement over the loudspeaker and they tried to talk to people at the fair that may have seen or talked to Aaron that night, to which one person remembered talking to Aaron about tattoos. When the family was unable to find Aaron at the fair, Stephanie would reach out to the authorities, but the authorities would tell Stephanie that due to Aaron's age, which was 24 at the time, 
and that it had only been a few hours, they were not going to do anything. So instead of waiting around, Stephanie reached out to the local news stations for help. This is when the authorities agreed to do something. When the family heard David's account of that evening, they knew it was unlike Aaron to just sit around and wait for David to come back. In fact, she would have went with David or had helped. Lieutenant McFerrin, who is the sole investigator in this case, is aware that David Combs is the last person to see Aaron that night. The police would like to talk to David Combs again. Although the police are still investigating any and all potential leads on this case, Aaron's sister Stephanie created the Finding Aaron Marie Gilbert Facebook page to encourage people to follow the case or leave tips and leads. The link to the Facebook page will be provided in the description box. This case is alarming and sad. Erin was a young girl who was trying to live her life and enjoying life by attending a festival with the man she connected with. The story of David's account is quite questionable to me, as by walking and being away from his date for two hours. Why is it that Erin did not walk with him to his friend's house that he ultimately never found? What happened that night to where Erin has been missing since 1995? So many unanswered questions that the family would like to know. But what we do know was that David Combs was the last person to be around her that evening. And someone knows or has seen something. And if they have, it is encouraged to reach out to the Alaska State Troopers and the contacting information will be provided in the description box. As always, thank you for spending some of your time here at the True Crime Spot. We'll see you in the next video.